So let's talk about backdrops for the model box. Um, when I say the term backdrop, I'm referring to all sorts of different things. Um, a backdrop can be a standard backdrop um, that we see in theater, something painted on muslin. Um, it could be an LED screen. It could be um, projections. Um, basically, it's a picture that is falling across the entire stage. I have one kind of in the model right now, a very rough version of one. Um, so if your design has some sort of backdrop, whether that be something that's an LED screen or is done with projection, or it actually is, you know, a real drop that flies in and out, regardless of what it is you want to display it in the model, you want it represented in the model. Um, and since the models that you all are building are for one specific scene, you're going to want to um, illustrate whatever is happening through that projection, that screen, that drop within that scene in your model. So um, let's say this is an LED screen in my case that shows tons of different things throughout the show, but in the particular scene that I'm building the model for, it is showing us this outdoor landscape. That's the scene that I'm gonna draw here. What I have drawn here is um, what I would call a rough model version of events. It's drawn just in Sharpie and pencil. Um, if you are actually wanting a full color backdrop, that's what you should have in your final color model. So the first thing that we have to you know, figure out when we wanna put a backdrop in is how big that needs to be. The backdrop usually should be encompassing the whole visible space of the stage, right? So here you see that the backdrop is covering everything as opposed to when it is further upstage, you can see areas of the stage on either side of it through the proscenium. So this would function wonderfully as um, a mid-stage drop or even like an intermission curtain coming in and out, right? So the first thing that you have to figure out is just how big you want your backdrop to be and that will really be dictated by how far upstage or downstage the backdrop is. So you can see right here, again, we can see the sides open like that. It doesn't give us that full picture. It looks kind of not right. From above, you can see that it's all the way back at the back wall of the theater, right? So if I wanted my, I think I said this was an LED screen. If I wanted my LED screen to live there the entire show, I would actually want one to be larger than this. Um, and you can kind of figure that out just by sticking different things in the model, different pieces of cardboard, different pieces of material to start to kind of figure out how big you need that to be. One way to play it super safe is um, if you make something as big as the whole back wall, it will cover everything, right? Um, so that's kind of how you figure out how big you want your piece to be. Um, now we have to deal with what should you make this out of. Um, I have a couple different suggestions for you. Um, if when it comes to the rough model version, again, for the rough model, I'm always going to recommend something like cardboard, getting a slab of cardboard, doing a rough sketch of kind of the outline of your picture stick it in there, call it a day, right? That's great for the rough model. When we're moving into the color model, what I would um, most commonly recommend is using some watercolor paper, painting, drawing, coloring, creating the scene on the watercolor paper, and then adhering that watercolor paper to something that's a little sturdier. That thing that is a little sturdier can be foam core, it can be the illustration board, it can be cardboard as well. Um, you could take your rough model piece, make a final model piece, and adhere it on there, okay? Um, when it comes to actually adhering the piece um, to another 
piece. I'm using that word a little too much. But when it comes to, you know, taking your drop that you may have drawn on watercolor paper, painted separately, and then gluing it to something that is hard faced, there's kind of a specific way that we want to do that. So I'm going to show that to you right now. Um, this is my pretend drop that I want to adhere to something that is a little sturdier. So I'm using foam core in this case. I would recommend just using whatever you have the most of for this material decision, especially if it's a backdrop. This is going to be a pretty big piece of material, right? So um, I recommend, you know, cardboard is kind of good because I don't want you all to run out of some of your nicer material that you might actually need need for other things, you know? So I'm going to start by taking my glue and this is the messiest I pretty much ever get with glue when I'm model making and kind of put it all over like that. Now that I have that, I'm going to take a little scrap of cardboard that I just have lying around and I'm going to smear all this glue out. And I'm making sure that I'm working it all the way up to the edges. As you can see, I'm kind of flicking it off the edge. Now, you can see it also matters. Don't put too much glue, because if I had too much right now, I would have globs like dripping down the sides. And I need actually just a little bit more in that corner. Basically what we're doing is we are creating just a nice, even, somewhat even, light layer of glue. I'm going to take my scrap, I'm going to set it to the side. And now I'm taking my backdrop, which I already cut out perfectly to be the size of the foam core, and I'm just laying it right on there, and I'm taking my fingers and making sure that it's lining up on either edge, and it's not overhanging on one side. And then I'm just going to lightly take my hands, press in the middle, and kind of push my way out. Um, be careful, you know, smearing this all over the place, especially if you do have some beautiful thing that you've just painted on here. You don't want to ruin that with the oils from your hands. So you can also take a scrap piece of material that you have lying around and press out with that. That might be better for your artwork than smearing your hands all over it. And now on the side I have a little bit of glue dripping over. I can see I'm just going to kind of rub that with my fingers and I'm making sure that the edges are adhered. They're looking, oh sorry you couldn't see that, they're looking pretty good. Everything looks like it's laying nice and flat. And so now I just might leave this to dry face down with a heavy book on top, which I don't have one near me to kind of show you that. I could use something like this to set it on there and just leave it for a little bit so that it can dry. Um, so that is how you want to attach any sort of picture onto any other sort of material, um, whether it be a backdrop. You might find this, um, you use this to do your walls, any number sort of things. Um, and so once I have this attached, I will have my backdrop glued onto something that is a little sturdier and giving it some more support, then I have to worry about how do I make it stand up in the model, right? The age old question. How do I make it stand up in the model? So there are a couple different ways to do that as well. First one I'm gonna show you is the Jack method. Here I have a really big, oh, falling over. I have a large backdrop here. This is one that would truly be great for the actual back wall of the theater because as you can see, it actually covers everything. And I decided to use the Jack method for this one. So you've also seen this in our walls demo video. 
I've made several jacks just out of cardboard and glued them to the back of this. The most important thing to watch out for when you're doing this is making sure that the jacks are cut at a perfect 90 degree angle. So use your triangle, use the grid of the cutting mat to make sure that everything is perfectly square on these jacks. I have quite a long piece here, so I did four. That's probably a little excessive. I probably would have been fine with just two. And I experimented with different depths. You see, I don't want to make these super long because I want this to live about 10 feet from the back wall. So that's what this is in scale. Um, these probably could have been a little thinner. One thing that is a really handy tip when you're making jacks like this, I think you saw it a second ago, but when this caught a breeze of air, yeah, look, it, it tips over like that because it is still front heavy. So one thing you can do is take some quarters um, or any coin quarters are just best because they're heaviest and tape them to the backs of your jacks and then this thing isn't going to go anywhere that weight will really keep it down so that's one way to do it now let's say you're in a scenario where you want this to actually be right up against the back wall or there's something else in the model that's right behind it basically you don't have the depth or the space to have a whole bunch of jacks and when you want to keep it really flat then you can do the hanging method, which is covered a lot more in depth in the video that's titled Hanging Scenery. Um, but essentially the same thing is going on here. Um, we have the actual backdrop. Then we have a piece of material that is connecting the backdrop to what I like to call the batten. The batten is this strip of foam core that is cut out and laid on edge so that it rests right on the stage right and stage left walls of the model box like so. So you can see it overhangs here and when I drop it in it rests right like that. You can use some little sewing pins to secure this. Make sure it really doesn't move around in the model at all by sticking them right like so. Now it's much sturdier and it's not going to fly around. So you can also use the hanging method like so. And again, for more detailed instructions on how to make this batten and make sure that everything is lined up well, watch the hanging scenery video. You can see here that I have measured out and marked center on the batten. And if you look very closely, marked center on the actual drop itself because I wanted to make sure that this whole thing was centered in the box which you can see it is there's equidistant space on either side here to the proscenium um, so if it being centered is important make sure that you measure those things and get it centered um, but those are the two basic methods for how to put a drop in the model um, yeah.